Welcome to our YouTube channel. Here we are sharing with you some extra hard questions for EQ AO9 practice. Enjoy the journey of learning. Thank you. I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. Let me thank all the viewers and subscribers for watching our videos and taking keen interest. Based on the request from our subscribers, here is a test paper for you, EQAO 9 Math Test Paper 2024. Sample test questions which I have created from past 15 years of experience. You can always go to my channel and practice some questions from past test papers. In the playlist, you will find at least five completely solved videos. We also share with you the variation which is expected this year. So, we expect students to get some questions based on computer literacy where the logical skills will be checked. Now, we have three more questions for you which are hard questions, extra hard questions, which make all the difference. And that's the reason why my students are right there on the top. So I'm sharing these three questions. I hope their solution will help you do much better. Well, in case you want to learn directly from me, feel free to send an email to globalmathinstitute at gmail.com. We can be part of your success. Now, amongst the three good questions, we call them extra hard. Here are the questions for you. Let's begin with question number 13. Well, remember one thing that in case you want to have a PDF of the whole question set, which we are predicting for 2024, you can send an email to us. Perfect. So, for a free copy of printable PDF, send an email to globalmathinstitute at gmail.com. Perfect. Now, let's read question number 13 and try to solve it. You'll find solution of most of the questions in my playlist. Parallel lines AP and BQ are intersected by two line segments. So, the green lines shown here are the parallel lines and they are intersected by two line segments. Angle CAP equals to 30 degrees. So, CAP is this angle, okay. Angle CAP is 30 degrees. Angle ACB, ACB is 78 degrees. Find the measure of angle CBQ. So we want to find this angle CBQ, which is x degrees. Four options are given to you. You can pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. Now for grade 9 students, parallel and transverse lines is a very important topic. But here is a slightly difficult question for you. How do we solve it? Well, there are a couple of ways it can be done. One of the ways which I like is that we could actually extend one of these line segments. So if I extend BC, right, so it becomes a transverse line. You see that? So if I extend intersecting at P, now we have BP as a transverse line. Now, since it is a transverse line, we know this angle here and angle X are alternate angles, right? So angle APC is equal to X degrees. Makes sense? So we basically need to find what is the angle APC. How do we figure this out? Well, a couple of ways. One way is that we know the external angle, right? External angle is ACB which is 78 degrees, right? So, external angle is sum of remote interior angles. You get the idea? So, so that way is, oh, we could actually get a solution. That is, 
one way of doing it, right? Now let's also discuss the the alternate ways of doing it. Now well, let's continue with this itself. We know this is 30 degrees. So we know that 78 degrees is equal to 30 degrees plus angle APC, right? So from here, we can find what angle APC is. It is the difference of 78 and 30, right? So let's rewrite. We get 78 degrees minus 30 degrees equals to angle APC, which is 48 degrees. And since we know that APC is also same as X degrees, so X is equal to 48. So option A is the correct option. Makes sense, right? So extend the line and do it. The alternate method which I thought in between to discuss with you was we could have extended the other line. You get the whole idea? And then do the question. Perfect. You understand? So I'd like you to try out with the alternate method also, right? So try alternate method. It is all learning, right? So try different ways of solving questions. It is going to help you a lot in mathematics for sure. So we are done with question number 13. We know option A is the correct option. Now let's look into question number 14. Take your time to read and understand this question. This is a worded problem and uh, that's where you get sometimes confused. Well, those of you who want to learn directly from me, feel free to send an email. We can definitely help and be a part of your success. Perfect. Question number 14 is, in a probability experiment with a spinner shown, the student wants to know how likely it is to spin the pointer and get the odd number twice in a row. So we need to get odd number. So you're looking for an event, right? So A, which is odd number twice in a row. Consecutive times. You get the idea? Okay. Now, experimental results indicate that in 20 trials, only four times they got both odd numbers. So, four out of 20 is experimental probability. So, that is what it means, right? Experimental results indicate in 20 times, only 4 times they got both, right? Okay, now continue. Based on this observation, what is the difference between the theoretical and experimental probability? So now you have to find theoretical probability also, right? And then the difference between theoretical and pro experimental probability will give you the answer which is one of these. Great. So let's find theoretical probability, which we are saying the probability of the event A, which is odd number twice in a row. Okay. So in this particular case, how many odd numbers are there? Well, 1 is an odd number, 3 is an odd number, and 5 is an odd number. So 3 out of 5 are odd numbers. Correct. So when you spin once, getting an odd number will be 3 out of 5, correct? Now you want in a row twice, you want it again. So that means it should be multiplied again by 3 by 5. And you get 9 over 25, makes sense. That is what you get. Here, if I simplify, 4 out of 20 basically means 1 out of 5. Is good to simplify, correct? So theoretical probability is 9 out of 25. Experimental probability is 1 out of 5. Is that part clear to you, right? Now, we need the difference, right? So difference is 9 by 25 
minus 1 by 5. So we can make a common denominator 25. We get 9 minus 5 times 5 is 25, right? So we get answer 4 over 25 as the difference between the two, which is again option A for this particular case. Does it make sense to you? Perfect. Have a good look at it. Try to understand the question. This year, we are expecting a lot of questions based on probability, especially when we have more than once doing an experiment. You get the idea? Okay. So these events are also called independent events. And in independent events, the probability get multiplied. The last question here, question number 15. The pattern of the triangle is extended as shown. The number of triangle is increasing. Find the number of triangle in the tenth pattern. So that's the question for you. You can always pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. Right. So let's uh, make a table, right, and see how do this pattern grow, right? We know the triangle's number is increasing, right? So pattern number, right? and triangles. So in pattern number one, we have only one triangle, correct. In the second pattern, we have one, two, three, four, increased by three, right? And in the third given to us, it is increased by one, two, three, four, five, right? So four plus five is nine. So that is how the pattern is increasing. You need to find the number of triangles in the tenth pattern. So there are a couple of ways to do it. You see, tenth pattern will have how many triangles? In the first we have one, second we have four, third we have three. If you actually sketch the fourth one, you'll get a better idea. It will find that that gives you 16. So clearly what we see is that one is one square, four is two square, nine is three square, 16 is four square. So on the 10th, we get 10 square, which is 100. So we'll get completely 100 patterns, uh, triangles in, in the 10th pattern. Makes sense. So I hope you've understood some strategies to answer some difficult questions for EQAO. Also watch our other videos where, uh, you know, one of the latest one is on computer literacy. The solutions I'm sharing now, but you can look into the video itself to understand these strategies. I hope it all makes sense. You can also search my playlist, Anil Kumar EQAO 9 playlist, where we have hundreds of questions solved for you. That will help you to prepare. And finally, if you want, if you want to learn directly from me, send an email. And if you want PDF of this, the same email. I hope it works. Thank you and all the best.